out of chapter number 2. Very, very, very familiar scripture here this morning. A preacher should be reminding you this regularly. Going to do it a little bit different this morning. Titus chapter 2 and verse number 11. Titus chapter 2 and verse number 11. Where's your Bible at, y'all? You bring your Bible to church. You can follow along. Everybody listen. Titus chapter number 2. And uh, down, please. Same as always. Down a little bit more, please. Titus chapter number 2 and verse number 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us. What does God's grace teach us? It teaches us denying ungodliness and worldly lust. You see that balance? See that balance? People say, well, we're saved by grace. Hallelujah. Woo. Yep, we sure are. But you know what grace teaches you? To deny ungodliness and worldly lust. So you can't say we're saved by grace so we can live however we want to. The grace of God teaches you to do right. And it says, and then it says this, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Does that describe your life? Soberly, righteously, and godly? If I came to talk to the people you work with, I said, what kind of person is that? Would they say, they live soberly, they live right, they live for God. You say, Lord, no, they wouldn't say that about me, but you don't know my job I've got for you. Don't matter what kind of job you've got, the grace of God will teach you to do right on your job. Now, I know it can get on your last nerve. I know that, and, but, and God knows that. But still, if, if it does get on your last nerve, tell them, look, I'm sorry, I'm trying to live right and make it right. You can do that. Now, I didn't, I'm not going to preach on that, but here's what I'm going to talk about. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope. What is that? The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk about that, that this morning. And the title of the message is, We're going to move out one day. We're going to move out one day. Glorious, glad day. That may not mean much to you this morning, but the Bible says blessed hope for a reason. The blessed hope is that we have the promise that one day Jesus is going to come and take us home to be where he is. said that where I am, there ye may be also. It's really going to happen. Now, that's not going to mean a lot to you this morning. I'm going to tell you who that's going to mean the least to today. Anybody, and there's a lot of you here, anybody here this morning who's healthy and got bills paid, your kids are grown, or maybe your kids are little and everybody's healthy and you're having a good life, and everything, that's not going to mean a lot to you this morning because you're pretty happy with your life now. One man even told me one time, he said, uh, well, we're, I'm not, I don't even want the Lord to come. I like my life like it is. I don't want to leave everything down here and go to heaven. Now, now a, man that, a man that don't think heaven's a lot better than anything you got down here ain't thinking right, is he? Uh, and, and the Lord will fix you one day so that you'll realize that what he's got up there is way better than what you've got down here. You say, well, I don't want the Lord to come. We'd have to leave this and we'd have to leave that. Listen, are you trying to tell me you think God, heaven ain't better than earth? One girl told me one time, she said, uh, she said, Brother Danny, you talk about the Lord coming back. Don't say that. I said, why? She said, I don't want the Lord to come back until I get married. I thought, bless your heart, honey. You don't need to be out in public. You, you shouldn't be allowed out of the house if you're that dumb. She thinks getting married is better than heaven. <laughs> Tell them, married people. It ain't better. Lord, it, it might be more like the other place. Uh, if, you, if you ain't real careful. <laughs> ain't that right? Listen, buddy. Listen, God, whatever God got for us. I don't claim to know everything we're going to do in heaven. I don't know. I don't know. I know we're going to worship God. I know we're going to be perfectly content. I know we're going to eat. I know we're going to, you won't ever, you ever get sick. You'll never have a problem. I mean, you could do worse than that, couldn't you? Amen. Never a problem. 
And the Lord going to let you have just enough problems so that one day you'll say, that's the blessed hope. And if you're not, your turn's coming. You can count on it. Uh, you'll never really want heaven till God ruins this world for you. And something happens to every Christian's life that just ruins this world for you. And you say, I don't, I don't really care if I stay here a minute longer. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Get us out of here. Take us on home. You realize that it ain't down here. I was at the funeral home, funeral twice this week. Uh, up there with Miss Tabitha. Her, her mother passed away only 49 years of age. Uh, passed away, and I'm assuming it was heart, heart trouble, heart attack, I don't know, but I think that's what they say up there was all that family in there, and they were weeping. They were wiping tears and hugging necks, and some of them they hadn't seen for a while. And, you know, you look at that scene over and over and over and over, and you think, my, my, that, that, that's why they call it the Blessed Hope. We ain't never going to another funeral home when that day comes. I was at, at, the, other, uh, at the other funeral uh, for um, uh, Todd's granddaddy uh, there, that morning, that same day, there again, people standing there crying. People saying, we lost dad. We lost granddad. And you know, you see that over and over. And that's the future for everybody in here. Funeral homes, hospitals, and graves. You want me to predict your future? You say, well, I'm lifting weights and I'm... Keep, yeah, I'm going to tell you your future. Your, your future is funeral homes, hospitals, and graves. You say, well, that's awful negative preaching. No, this is the positive part. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great. It ain't down here, people. Our roots are not down here. Our home's not down here. Our life's not down here. It's all up there. And I'm glad that day will someday finally come. And, and I, we saw a woman fight. You know, we went the couple's trip this year over to Gutlinburg. And uh, uh, that you know, it just hit me yesterday. I'll, I'll never get to look at it no different. It's Gutlinburg and Pig and Forge. And uh, I was over there yesterday, and we was getting ready to turn into uh, this place, and I saw this man slam the door of a car and run around, and I said, uh-oh, fight. And the woman got out of the car, and you could hear curse words. He was screaming, blankety blank. That's how some of them vacations turn out. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but have you ever had one of them kind of vacations? And, buddy, you're madder than the devil because you spent all that money and fuss and fight the whole time. All the way there, all the way back, the whole time. I hate you. I wish I'd have never come. Well, it's your fault. Well, I'm paying for that. You know, you'd, you'd think I'd been through some of that, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, but I'm telling you what, buddy, uh, you think about that. And I, they were out there, and he was cussing, and she slammed the door. And the bad part, there was a kid sitting right there in the seat. Listen to every bit of that. Hearing his mom and dad. That kid's going to grow up remembering his mom and dad fussing and cussing and screaming and hollering right there in front of him. Then you look, uh, and, uh, I can take you places we, on bus route where you, I mean, you know, you, you drive, you go to Tanger Outlet and you think uh, everybody's happy and everybody's rich and everybody drives a nice car. But that ain't the way the, world, the world's living today, people. One third of the world went to bed hungry last night. Another third went to bed starving past hungry, and another third were in, went to bed with food in their belly. This whole world's a bad, bad place. It's a, it's a wicked place. That, that, you, you don't believe that? You don't think I'm on scriptural ground? The Lord put it like this. Pa Paul said this present evil world. That's what he called it. This present evil world. You know what John called it? The whole world lieth in wickedness. That's the worldview that I have because it's a biblical worldview. The world lies in wickedness. We're not here to make the world a better place. I heard a famous preacher say the other day, he said, uh, we're not interested in anything that don't make the world a better place. I don't know what book he's been reading, but that ain't our calling. Our calling is not to make the world better. Our calling is to call you out of this world and make a people for his name and he'll call us literally out of this world one of these days. You know, there's a lot of people today that are positive thinkers and Christian scientists. This guy says a Christian scientist and he was neither Christian nor scientist. And uh, they, they call themselves that and he said uh, they believe everything's in your mind. If you're having a bad day, it's all in your mind. If, if you're sick, they believe pain 
is in our mind, and if we can just believe that we're, we're well, we're, we're really well. Now, we had a word for that growing up, call it crazy. Uh, but uh, uh, there's literally people who go to school and are educated and think it's on your mind. That's what the Christian science movement teaches. I told that guy, told an old preacher one time, he said, I got a toothache. And that guy said, uh, it's all in your head. And he said, well, you ever heard of anybody having a toothache anywhere else? I mean, you ain't have it one in your foot. Of course it's in my head, you crazy thing. Uh, he said, uh, uh, I told him one time, he, this guy knocked on this door. Little boy came to the door and he said, uh, is your mama here? And he said, uh, yeah, but my mama's sick. He said, no, 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 no. You have to think positive. Your mama thinks she's sick. She's really not sick. She just thinks she is. He said, oh, okay. He came to the next door. Uh, he he uh, knocked, on, knocked on the door. The little boy came back. He said, where's your mama? He said, mama, she's worse. Than, she's awful. She's worse. She don't know. Your mama's not worse. She just thinks she's worse. Do you understand? She thinks she's worse, so she is. So he said, okay, next week you come, knocked on the door, and that little boy said, uh, where's your mama? He starts saying, wait a minute. He said, mama thinks she's dead. Anyway, and that's that's the truth. That's the truth, brother. It, it ain't all in your mind, folks. It's not all in your mind. Suffering is real. Pain is real. God said he's one of them Christian scientists one time to he's in the army and something he kept telling him, It's all in your head, it's all in your head, it's all in your head. You just imagine it. He said, You take a take a straight pin and walk up behind him and see if it's all in his head. Uh, it's not. Pain is real. Suffering is real. Uh, heartache is real. Burdens are real. And this old world's full of it. This old world is full of it. But I'm glad we're going to move out one day. We're not always going to have to live in this old sin-cursed world. I'd like to encourage everybody here today, things are going to get better, people, really fast. One day, one blessed, one glorious, one glad reunion morning when the Lord comes and says, Come on home, children. If you're saved, things are really looking up. And I'm not kidding you. It's a really, really, really looking good. I want to say uh, a few things about it this morning. And the first thing I want to say is we're going to move out because Jesus first loved us. The Bible said in 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. We didn't love him first. We grew up a stranger, alienated from the Lord, and he loved us. You know what amazes me? That he knew who I was and loved me before I was ever born. Him, in his foreknowledge, 2,000 years ago, went to a cross stuck out his hands, they beat nails in his hands, and he bled and died for me who was not even born yet. I've heard people say, I, 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 I've met a lot of people. So I ain't got no friends, nobody cares. Me, nobody, that's why people commit suicide a lot of times. They think nobody cares about them. I got good news for you. Jesus cares about you and showed it. He cares enough about you to die on the cross for your sin. That little baby in the manger that came and you see the, the Mary and Joseph and the wise men or whoever and there's the little baby Jesus in the morning. That was God himself manifest in flesh in that manger. That's why the world hates it. That's why they have no use for it. That's why, because that man that grew up, the man Christ Jesus, that little baby that was born in that manger changed the whole world. We date our checks and our birthdays from his day uh, coming into this world. We date B.C., A.D. B.C. means before Christ. A.D. means Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, when the Lord came into this world. And everybody writes their checks and writes down their birthday, dating from that one birthday, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ, the Lord, was born in that manger. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he, he's, we're going to move out, 
because he came down. See him walking the shores of Galilee. See him walking over there and touching a blind man. And the blind man's sight comes back. See him walk over here and put his finger in the ears of a deaf man. And the deaf man's uh, hearing comes back. See him at Lazarus' tomb walking over there saying, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead come forth out of the grave. Watch his sinless life. Watch his spotless life. Watch him live his whole life for other people. Watch him go to the cross. Watch him spread out his hand. Watch him say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Watch him as he hangs his head and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit and say it is finished. Watch him as he pays the price for all of us today. Thank God. That's why we're going to get to move out of here one day. He first loved us. Not only that, number two, because he saved us by his grace. Uh, don't ever get over getting saved. Amen. How many of you sitting here today remember getting saved? Would you raise your hand, please? Just what everybody does. Now, if you don't remember it, you either didn't get saved or you got dementia or something's wrong with you. Something bad wrong with you if you don't remember getting saved. Something as big as God move in, you ain't going to forget it if your mind's right. Now, I'm telling you, I'll never forget that night at Nebo Baptist Church. That's how come I get to move out one day. You know why I get to move out one day? Because that night at Nebo Baptist Church, I was sitting right back here on this side. My cousin was sitting beside me. You've heard it over, and you'll hear it a bunch more, and you keep coming here. I was like Paul. Everywhere Paul went, he said a light struck me down, and he turned to give his testimony, and I'm going to tell you what the Lord did for me. I was on my way to hell, running up and down all over Nebo. I had this little OMG, and I took the top down that thing every day, and I rode around them curves all the time. I was a little rock and roller, uh, a little a nut that ought to have my head beat in. And I, was, I, I always thought in the back of my mind, I thought, I'm going to wreck this thing one of these days. I'm going to come around on these curves. Somebody's going to hit me. And what mom says is going to happen. I'm going to die and go to hell. That night I went to that church. That night I heard a bunch of people get up and start singing. They got up and started singing that night. My, my, my. I like what that old song said. I went there to fight. But oh, my, that night, something got a hold of me. It wasn't long. I, I and there's nothing better than church when you know the Lord's there. Have you ever been to church when you knew the Lord's there? Ain't nobody gonna have to beg you to come back when that happens uh, because I knew there was somebody talking to me. And this girl standing up in front of me, she turned around and said, Danny, why don't you get saved? And there's a bunch of people going to the altar, you know, and everything. And oh, it embarrassed me today. I didn't know what to do. I was trapped. I, I felt like a, when daddy's coon dogs, trees a coon, that's the way it felt. That poor little old coon, he's up that tree and he's just looking down there at him like he is. His eyes that big around, and there's all them dogs just a looking at you like it you ain't going nowhere, boy. That's the way I felt. I felt like I'm surrounded. Uh, here's the Holy Ghost and the Son and the Father and all these people from school. I didn't know y'all's Christians. Where you been all this time? And they all got religious when the revival hit. And you know, the girl turned around. And she said, "Danny, why don't you get saved?" I said, "It ain't my time. I don't. I don't know what to say." I said, it's not my time to get saved. I had no idea what I was talking about. I thought, I was one of these people that thought, when it was your time to get saved, you'd hear something go, dun, 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 dun. angel step out, honey castle, it is your time, and it didn't happen. It was just like, boom, 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 boom. I could hear mom saying, there's a heaven, there's a hell. My mom went through the house all the time singing. Uh, you know, she went through the house, hey, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I want to go to heaven. Hell! is an awful, awful place. And I thought, my Lord, I thought, good night. And the, and the Lord said, come on, Danny, come on. And the devil said, and if you go up there, everybody's going to be looking at you. Look at all these people. It's packed out. Everybody in there knew me from school, our, our basketball team, you know, and everything. And, and, and I said, good night. I stood there. My hair was down to here. I had an old, old pair of blue jeans, like some kind of idiot. Had a flag. Back then, everybody wore bell bottom, big, big bell bottom movie. Had a flag sewed on the bottom of my pants. Somebody, somebody should have just had a flag raising uh, right there and kicked me real good. Uh, but they didn't. And I stood there and I prayed. Here went another. And here went another. And here went another. And here went another. And my cousin turned around and he said, hey, man, let's go get saved. 
I said, oh! I mean, she was hitting me over here. Here was the Lord on this side and my cousin on this side. And the devil said, if you, they're going to they're gonna make fun of you. They're going to laugh at you if you go up there in front of all these people. And the Holy Ghost sweetly said, what good is it going to do if they don't laugh? If you're in hell one day, what good is it going to do you? And I thought, you know what? And about that time, I can't explain it, but if you saved, you know what I'm talking about. About that time, it's just like something broke. Right at that time, so you, you remember that? You remember that happened? When it just like something says, okay. And it's just like, and I stepped out like that. And brother, I stepped one foot in front of the other. And I came down and I fell about right here. There were so many people around there, I couldn't get in the altar. And I bawled my eyes out for about 30 minutes. It didn't take the Lord 30 minutes to save me. But it took me 30 minutes to puke out all them sins. And all that lie. And all that wickedness that I'd done. And I I'm telling you, I got up that day and I stood up that morning, that evening and my name was written down. My reservation got put in and thank God I'm going to move out one day. I put in my reservation a long time ago. You got yours in? Now, if you were young, you got saved, it might not have been that dramatic. You get saved six, seven, eight years old. Sometimes you say, well, good night, all that didn't happen to me. Well, I mean, you know, you're six, seven, eight. That don't matter. As long, if you know you got your faith in the Lord. See, I, see, I got my faith in this chair. I would not do this in front of all these people if I thought that chair was going to drop me. I believe in it. I helped put these things together. I thought this thing would hold me up. That's what I'm doing to my soul. You know how come I can jump around and say, well, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved because Jesus Christ and his blood is underneath me. I'm sheltered in the arms of God. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Don't forget, we're going somewhere better. We're going somewhere better than this, y'all. Cheer up. You say, well, Brother Danny, I've been struggling to pay my bills and I don't know if it's this house I live in. Is this all I'm going to have? Don't worry about it. It's going to be over with pretty soon. You're going to get sick and old and we'll put you in a rest home. Cheer up. That's your future. <laughs> if the Lord don't come, some of y'all looking pretty bad already. Amen. Well, the handwriting's on the wall, brother. It ain't down here, people. It's up there. Hallelujah. My name is in the book of life. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I'd rise above all doubt and strife and read my title clear. And ain't none of you can get up there and erase it. I know some that would like to. Somebody wrote me and they said, somebody I wrote us the other day and said, I'd find out where that preacher is, I'd kill him. Well, I'm right here in Morgan, North Carolina. You're all taught. Uh, Y'all back me up now. Uh, I do, somebody said the other day, one woman called me one time and she said, is this Danny Castle? I said, yes, it is. She said, I'm going to kill you. I said, why? She said, you call my mother a bad name. And I said, who is your mother? She said, I didn't know who her mother was. I was up preaching. And there was, you know, 700 people there. And she said, I called her mother a bad name. We always call that the guilty dog barks. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, I said, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean no harm. I didn't call your mother a name. She said, I'll kill you. One lady called me one time. She said, I'm a witch. And I'm going to put a curse on you. I said, bring it on, sister. You think you can put a curse on me? You can't put no curse on me. The Lord's already blessed me. The blood of Jesus has covered me. You can kill me. That ain't a curse. I'd be far better off than having to live in this world. You can hurt me. He'll just bless me and give me more rewards. I can't lose for winning. I'm telling you this morning, we're, we're on the right side, y'all. We're on the right team. Thank God we're hooked up with the right one. You're in the right church, by the way, too. You're in the right church. You say, well, there's people at work trying to get me not to come there. That's a good sign right there. That's a good sign. The devil trying to get you not to come, that's a good sign you're right where you're supposed to be. I'm telling you this morning, we're moving out of here one day. One day, you know something? It's like this. But man, I have, I do have, believe it or not, savings account. I don't put hardly no money in it. I don't trust them in banks. 
I'm like my kin folks in West Virginia. They ain't none of them trust banks. And uh, you put a little money in there. You put money in savings. Plus, it ain't none of the government's business. Sound good? Amen, right there. A man asked me one time, said about paying taxes and stuff. And I said, you're supposed to do what's right and what's legal. But don't you give them sorry devils one dime that you don't have to give it to them. Amen. Amen. Lord, damn mercy, they're supporting everything we don't believe in. Well, anyway, you got a tax, you got a saving account. Man goes down there, he puts in $100, saved. He goes down there the next week, two weeks later, puts in another $100, saved. You maybe get up... Uh, Several thousand dollars, four, five thousand, hundred dollars here, hundred dollars there, maybe five hundred once in a while, two, twenty dollars, sixty dollars. I want to make a deposit. I want to make a deposit. I want to make a deposit. Savings account. That's all saved. And then once in a while, he says, Man, something's come up at the house and I need a little money. So he goes down there and he said, uh, I need to withdraw uh, five hundred dollars out of my account, please. She said, Here you are, sir. Counts about five hundred. If he had three thousand, that takes him down to twenty five hundred. And then he goes in there and deposits 100. That puts him up to 26. And then he goes down there and, dep- and makes a withdrawal of 300. That brings him down to 23. And then he goes down there and, and deposits 150. And that puts him up to 2450. And it's getting harder and harder, isn't it? Uh, and, uh, and then he goes down there and he makes another withdrawal of $100. That's 2350. And then he re- makes 1,000 uh, uh, withdrawal. That's 1350. And then he puts 500 in. That's 1850. And then one day he says, you know what? I'm building a new house. I'm going to buy me a new car. I want it all. Clean out my account. Every bit of it. Give it to me. Wipes out his account. Takes them all. That's a major withdrawal. Did you know that's the same thing the Lord's doing? For 2,000 years, he's calling out a bride for his son, Jesus Christ, the church. You are very, very blessed and privileged if you're a part of the church. The church is a new thing. There was no church. Somebody don't try to correct me on this because of the book of Acts. They don't know what you're talking about. There was no church which is his body in the Old Testament. There was a called out group called church. But there was no body of Jesus. There was no body of Jesus while he was here. He was walking around in it. Amen. He ain't got two bodies. There couldn't be his body here when he's walking around in it. But every person that's really been saved is a part of the body of Christ, which will be his bride. You say his body's his bride? Yeah, like Adam and Eve. Remember when God took that right out of Adam's side? Right out of here? That's where they stuck that sword in Jesus' side. There came out blood and it pierced by his purchase, his wife, which is you and I, which are saved. The night I got saved, God said, uh, I want to deposit him in my savings account. Angel said, got it, Danny Castle. You sure you want to let him? That's right. He ain't worth a dime. That ain't for you to decide. My son said he looked good to him. Shut up. And the angel said, but he don't deserve it. And the Lord said, let me look at his record. Yeah, he does. Perfect, far as I can see. And the devil said, ah! Didn't you see what he done? And the Lord said, nope, sure didn't. That's the joy of being saved, y'all. That's the joy of being saved. He don't see us as we really are. He sees us through the blood. Woo! Hallelujah! Listen, ain't a state mortgaging better than that right there. Although I'll take that too. Some for the flesh, some for the spirit. But I'm telling you this morning, you hear me? He said, he, no. Now, when, uh, when Jeff Worley got saved, God said, I'm, I'll make a deposit. Jeff Worley. Your name's up there, right, Brother Jeff? When Dottie got saved, God said, I need to make another deposit. Bunch of revival comes. Bunch of them, I'm going to deposit 800 of them. When a Christian dies like Ralph did this week. The Lord says, I need to withdraw one. Make a withdrawal. Make a withdrawal. A lot of Christians die every week. That's the Lord making withdrawals out of his savings. Guess what? You know what the one day the Lord's going to say? You know what? We got a new
new house being built for these people. My son said I'd go to prepare a place for them. I'll come again and receive them unto myself. I won't ever just clean the whole savings account out, get them every one up here. That's when he comes and we're taking them out, brother. He's cleaning out the account. And we're going to go live with him forever. The robes will be white. We'll be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm going to move out one day. And John said, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, descending from God out of heaven. That's suspended probably between heaven and earth, that New Jerusalem. We'll get into that. This is not a doctrinal message. It's a message of encouragement. For every older lady that's walked the floor, there's a lady from way out west been calling me. She's tore up over her son, and I called her son and, and tried to talk to him. Couldn't get much out of him. There's people right now, right now while we're sitting here, on the way to Raleigh, see a son in prison, on the way to Winston-Salem where they have a baby in the hospital. There's babies all over that place with tubes running down their nose and mom's out there crying saying, why, why? This, this old world in bad shape, people. You're in, you're in the good, healthy part. You ought to shout and thank God. And I'm glad to report to you this morning, the Lord ain't forgot us. And we're going to move out one day. I want you to stand, please, bow your head. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye is closed. Nobody's talking, nobody's moving, please. Your heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want to ask you a very, very important question right now. You ready? If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Danny, I'm saved. I know I've been saved. I know that I've been saved. If the Lord came today, I know I'd go with Him. I'm not perfect, but I know that I've been saved by the grace of God. I want you to just slip up your hand, please. Raise your hand, take it right back down. God bless you. You can put your hands down. There are some hands here this morning that could not go up. Every head bowed, never eye closed. Christians pray, Christians pray. If you're here this morning, sir, mom, dad, young person, you say, preacher, I would give anything in the world if I had what you got, what you was talking about up there this morning. I'd give anything if I could believe that and feel like it. Well, you can. You can. You can if you'll just give it all to him. Turn it over to him this morning. Turn it over to him this morning. Get out of your seat. Walk down here to this altar and make things right. Come on. This is our invitation. You just come on right now. Come on. If you could not lift your hand and you want to make things right with God, we're not going to sing. Christians, you keep praying. You keep praying. Don't get in a hurry. Don't get, don't get weary. Christians, just keep praying. Come on. Something's coming. Something's coming right now. Something's coming right now. You come on. Come on right now. Just get out of your seat, sir. Get out of your seat, ma'am. Make it, make it right this morning. Come on, make it right this morning. Before you leave here today, make this thing right. Make this thing right. Come on, come on. Get it right this morning. Others are coming. Others are coming. Amen, amen. Christians, keep praying. It's still very early. No, Don't get no rush. God's doing some work in some people's heart right here this morning. Come on, young man, young lady, would you come? Come right now, come on. Just slide right out of your seat. Make your way down here. Let's get right with God. Come on. Come on right now. Come on. Come on right now. You can do it. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. Let the Lord help you this morning. Amen. Make things right. Make things right. Hey, listen, if you fail at everything else in life and you never amount to nothing in this world, at least you can know where you're going when you leave. And that's the most important thing. Please come. Please. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on right now. Will you do it? Father, I pray right now, in Jesus' name, may the Holy Spirit of God touch every single person on this altar today. Lord, I thank you for the great reassuring scriptures that we've read today. Thank you for that promise of the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, move in here today. Do what ought to be done. Change lives and touch hearts. Have your way in our lives. We love you. 
Lord, I pray for that one of those here this morning who still may be holding out, never been saved by your grace. Help them, Lord, to come today. Do what ought to be done in their life. We'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. She's still playing this morning. Amen. Amen.